everyone. Um, my name is Taffy Schurz from Kroll Discovery, and I'm so excited to see a lot of smiling faces and maybe some tired faces this morning joining us for the Innovation Awards. As you know, the Innovation Awards help spotlight those relativity users that solve real-world challenges and improve the relativity experience for their clients. Since winning the Solution Provider and Community Choice Awards last year, our application, AV Suite, which allows our users to listen and redact audio files in our viewer and then also view video files, has helped us to continue to use the platform to solve unique problems, connect to new data sources, and save time and money for our clients. And isn't that what it's all about, Brian? It is. I'm, I'm extremely excited today. Our, our tool last year, uh, Consent Tracker, allowed us to, to handle transactional work with relativity in half the time of, of what we would normally do. Um, and it's, it's, at, it's allowed us to, to really leverage the community and, and, and use it to um, you know, really be one single platform for both litigation and transactional work. So I'm excited to see you know, the finalists and who wins. Yeah, absolutely. So as last year's winners, we're honored to get the show started this year by introducing our hosts. We have Perry Marchant and Drew Deitch. So without further ado, let's see how the relativity community has been updating innovation this year. Thanks. Thank you, Taffy and Brian. Uh, your developments on the relativity platform are a testament to the creative thinking within the relativity community and the ingenuity of the many developers out there in the field who continue to push the relativity platform, and that's what we're celebrating today. Innovations that enhance the relativity experience for our end users um, and solve the challenges that arise with massive data sets, many data sources, and tight deadlines. True, I couldn't agree more. And having been in this uh, judging process every year now, I'm just thrilled to see how this Innovation Awards event has grown, both in the number of submissions that we receive, but also in the increasing uh, sophistication, creativity, uniqueness of the solutions that we get. It's really awesome to see. And speaking of growth and change, uh, based on feedback from you, we kind of overhauled the judging process this year, and we made some changes to how we evaluate submission, the, the submissions that we get, and we want to walk you through some of those changes. Yeah, that's right. You know, a lot of the feedback we've gotten the past couple of years was that the Innovation Awards, the judging process was a little bit of a black box. You know, people wanted to know more about how we're evaluating all the great tools we see. So this year, knowing that we'd have you know, more solutions than ever before and a more competitive field than ever before, we thought it was the right time to be more transparent with how we do the judging. So for the first time, you know, we shared our judging criteria as part of the Innovation Award submission. So anyone who submitted this year was able to see the four criteria that we were judging by um, online as they were submitting their application. So those criteria were first, impact. You know, how is the solution saving time, saving money, uh, making the work more efficient ultimately for end users? Uh, second was the use of the platform. Um, ADS, custom pages, APIs, RIP, how much of that stuff are you using? The whole platform toolbox, are you utilizing you know, everything that you have with the power of relativity? Third was uh, the intuitiveness of the workflow. Does it feel native? Does it feel natural? Is it Does it easy look like it's you? part of relativity? Does it feel like it's part of the, of the core app? And finally, of course, overall, how innovative and unique was the solution? Is it something we've seen before? Cool. Another, um, another big change that we made was that this year we invited three guest judges to help us choose the winners. Each one is a respected industry expert, thought leader, or practitioner who provided a really unique perspective on what innovation is in our space. And so, we have Zach Abramowitz, who's a co-founder of Reply All, columnist for Above the Law, and a contributor to TechCrunch. Sean Doherty, industry analyst covering governance, com uh, compliance, and e-discovery. And we have Kelly Twigger, who's a principal attorney at ESI Attorneys, a law firm for e-discovery uh, and information law, and creator of e-discovery Assistant, which is a web-based uh, playbook for lawyers and legal professionals. I would like to uh, welcome um, our three judges up, up here. Yeah. Zach, Sean, Kelly. So guys, we, uh, you know, we really enjoyed uh, our working sessions as we went through the submissions, and, and I thought you, know, you guys brought a lot of critical thinking to you know, how we were looking at these applications, and our team got a lot out of it. I hope you guys got a lot out of it too. 
Um, I thought maybe each one of you could just kind of talk a little bit about what your approach to the judging process was and just your thoughts about the experience. Maybe we'll, we'll start with you. Sure. So I have to tell you, looking at the applications, I was wildly impressed, not just in terms of the sophistication of the different applications, but more than anything, how outside the box of simply e-discovery they were. Um, looking at either a whole litigation or looking at something completely outside of litigation. Um, and it's nice to see that the relativity can be pointed in a lot of different directions. Cool. And for me, it was, it was a great opportunity to <clears throat> get to know the ecosystem more in each year, how it gets uh, better and better at uh, bringing out applications that save time and money and work with relativity as it gets uh, better. Yeah. Um, I thought this is my first fest, so thanks to everybody for having us here. And um, it's been an amazing experience to not only be a part of judging these um, different submissions, but also to seeing everything that you guys are innovating with uh, as it comes to dealing with data, because I have a couple of different perspectives. So I'm a software developer, an attorney, and I also deal with the data. And so I was really impressed with the ways in which you guys came together to provide really great user interfaces um, and also to really increase ways in which as lawyers we can do more things with the data faster. So I, I thought all the submissions were really incredible and it gave me lots of ideas as a developer. So thank you. Well, thank you so much to our judges. The, uh, the depth of insight and the thinking you guys did and how critically you came to the process and how serious you were about it was really meaningful to us. We really appreciated it. And it really improved uh, the outcome this year. I think the judging process was the toughest we've had with the, these submissions so far. But really appreciated your help. Couldn't have done it without you. Absolutely. So we're going to bring the judges back up on stage a little later to help us hand out some of the yep. awards. They're going to announce the, uh, the winners and hand out the awards. So Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. See you guys in a little, little bit. <laughs> so that's not the only improvement we've made. Uh, in the spirit of innovation, we also wanted to figure out how we could better organize all the submissions that we received, discover which ones truly stood out, and then act by selecting the winners. Drew, tell us a little bit about how we, uh, how we did that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, every year, you know, we go through this process, and it's hours of manual work, it's a ton of different data sources we're kind of looking at. It really is. We, we have, um, oh, sorry, guys. We collect all this data, we look at all these demos, we look at all these screenshots, we, put, we email each other, we take notes, we put it into all these different formats, and what we're ultimately trying to do in Innovation Awards is go through the judging process. What we come up with is uh, usually a PowerPoint. Yeah, just a static document, not super useful, not super helpful uh, when you want to like, dig in and learn a little bit more about the submissions. So in, pri yeah, so in prior years, we've come up with this PowerPoint, we bring it to the judges, and it just sort of falls flat. It doesn't do our submissions justice, and what ends up happening is the judges just go back and watch a bunch of the demos and we kind of talk about it in the room. So this year I was sitting with my colleague, Mike Obergon. He's, uh, he's new to uh, the Innovation Awards. It's his first time helping out. And I'm talking to Obergon about the awards and what we have to do and all this stuff we have to gather and all the notes we have to take. And is that before or after he got arrested by the stormtrooper? That was before, <laughs> yeah, okay. and for wearing the White Sox hat. Um, <laughs> So I'm talking to Mike about Obergon about the, about the process and getting him ready. He's going to help out. And as we're talking about it, I'm actually kind of dreading it. It's a lot of work. And it's a lot of disparate data we have to pull together. And as I'm talking to Obergon, I'm looking at his screen. And on his screen, he has relativity. And he's got a little relativity app that he had created uh, to help manage some of our other work on the team. And you know, we thought to ourselves, why are we using PowerPoint for this process? So we told Obergon, hey, man, you know, can you go home? Look at relativity. See if you can put this, the submission materials into relativity, and that might help us. And he comes back. He emails us a link. We got a link at like midnight one at night. Midnight. Yeah. He's really excited. He emails us a link at midnight. We open its relativity, and he's got the Obertivity Innovation Award app that he's awesome. created for us. It's got everything in it. Yeah. It's got the demos, the screenshots, the native files. So we have a little video that we're going to show of, a, of our judging process and let you see what, what we did with relativity this year to make it a little bit easier. It's our little innovation at the innovation. A little apps. So we put all the submissions into relativity. We organize them into fields, layouts, and views, and objects. We get in a room. We're able to really easily collaborate uh, with each other and with the judges. Perry, I think it made it a lot more efficient. Yeah, I think it was a way more streamlined, uh, way easier to work, work uh, together, work with our, our, our new guest judges. It was pretty, pretty awesome. So we got Renee in the room. We got Perry. We're collaborating. We eventually brought our guest judges in to 
a conference, video conference in, and we're all sharing the same relativity workspace and reviewing these things in a nonlinear fashion. We can pop open the screenshots. We can pop open the demo videos. Made it really easy. So with 26 innovations up for contention this year, we really needed to streamline the judging process. And the relativity platform was a great solution for us. We did want to recognize all the participants uh, this year for making this year's innovation awards super fun, challenging, thought-provoking. It's, it's awesome to see what, what, what these guys are building. And, and I'm, always, I'm always blown away. Um, picking, yes, yes. And picking just three finalists in each one of these categories is, is really hard every year. As Drew said earlier, I think this year was like our toughest year yet. Um, and we don't have time to go through all of these submissions, but we did want to kind of just highlight some of the themes that we saw emerge as we looked at, this, at the submissions. Because it's kind of like a little bit of a barometer for what maybe the hot topics are in our, our, in, in, our, in our industry. And the first one is around collaboration and project management. There are a bunch of solutions in this, in this kind of category or theme. And you know, it really depends on the firm, the project, the workflow. Um, and, and that's why we really love seeing people solve this problem with relativity, because you can kind of build a unique project management solution. Everyone has their own flavor of project management yeah. activity. And one of the ones that really stood out in this theme is uh, a, a solution from United Lex called the KM. Now, what the KM is, it's project man let's say a project man management teams generate um, business intelligence and relativity by aggregating case-specific project tracking data. And this information helps them identify key trends from, from historical metrics, uh, leverage old matters to predict new, uh, uh, estimate new costs on, on new projects, and view data growth over time. Um, the KM is also a, a repo for them for their internal best practices, their workflow and training documents, and historical decisions, so they can track all that stuff. And if you kind of look across the top at some of the tabs here, you get a, a little bit of a sense for how big this app is and how much of like a one-stop shop it is for the project management team at United Lex. This is where the United Lex project managers live. Yeah. Yep. Really cool. The next theme we saw emerge from this year's submissions as we start to look at them was data transformation, management, and normalization. These, these groups all were taking data either coming into relativity or already in relativity and doing work on it to make it more efficient for them to act on the data. Um, one that we really wanted to highlight here was one of my favorite apps this year, Sandline's Language Localizer. And Perry knows I kept talking about this thing. It's a compact, simple app. Minimalist. 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 But we loved it because it solves a common pain point in a really elegant way. You know, what you're allowed to do here in a custom page is basically paste in Unicode for multilingual text so you can localize your fields in your layout so your reviewers who are doing a multilingual review will have English next to the other languages right in their layout. And a really simple way you can do this in a few seconds, I think they built it in just a few days or under a week. That's awesome. But huge impact and really understanding kind of a subtle but um, important way you can speed up your review and make it more um, comfortable for your reviewers in the tool. Uh, another category that we saw was around um, uh, handling new and, and challenging data types. So what we're talking about here are you know, audio, video, mobile, uh, chat, social. Even Excel files can be pretty challenging to handle uh, sometimes. And one of our favorites in this kind of theme was um, from QMobile, um, uh, from QDiscovery, um, Q, um, was QMobile Insight from QDiscovery. And what's cool about this is QDiscovery was here last year at the Innovation Awards. They were kind of inspired by all of the different um, solutions they were seeing, and they wanted to build something themselves. So they started brainstorming right here at FEST last year. Their, their brainstorming kind of spilled over to the FEST party. They went and to the Field Museum. They went to the Field what Museum. We, what can we submit? And this is where they had their aha moment. Mm. They were going like, to do a little innovation in the mobile space. And they were near the Bear Dog exhibit at the Field Museum, so they codenamed their project Bear Dog. I still don't know what a Bear Dog is. I don't either. Yeah. <laughs> project Bear Dog was born, and, and this is, uh, became QMobile Insight. And what QMobile Insight is, is a way for um, you to take a forensic export of a mobile device and put it into a tabular view so that the reviewer can easily read down the thread. And like then you the can emojis. do, of course, you can do conceptual clustering on the data that you pull out. You can, of course, use Fluid to do easy filtering and, and visually analyze the results. And so this is a really uh, cool story, cool inspiration from Innovation Awards, and really solves a, 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 a real problem. Handling uh, mobile is a, is a data type that's not easy to handle in relativity. That's a great one. 
The next theme we saw kind of emerge from this year's submissions was reusing and getting more from your data. So this is all about minimizing duplicative work, not having to code the same documents over again, not having to process and host the same data over again. And we saw some really unique workflows come out of this theme. Two that we wanted to highlight actually kind of tackled a similar problem in different ways, which we thought was cool. First, we had Night Owl's Decision Center. And so Decision Center is going to allow you to leverage common information across multiple matters. And when there's a significant amount of documents that you've already coded from a previous matter, you can rip that information right into your new matter and have it ready for you. I think in one big case, they managed to save over 80% of their manual review by using relativity integration points in their custom agents awesome. to reuse that data. Uh, we also had RVM with Matterhorn taking a similar problem, but with a slightly different approach. They're going to give you the coding history right in the uh, reviewer interface in the related items pane, yep. allowing the, the reviewer to make their own decision, but have the context of what they've done with those documents in the past, which we thought was really cool. Yeah, really cool. Integrated in right, right in the, in the review, review interface. So lots of uh, amazing things in the, app, in the Innovation Awards this year. We love seeing these hot trends in the industry. And every year, kind of, we don't really know what's going to come up and what's going to be a hot topic. Um, we're really proud of all of the submissions from the community. And oh, one too far. Our goal for the Innovation Awards, actually, is to keep celebrating uh, these submissions. So it doesn't end right here at Fest. We've got the blog and the website, and we want to keep celebrating all of, all of the submissions throughout the year. Yeah, all the, all, we want all these to be recognized. We're, we've already been highlighting them on our blog. We're going to continue to promote them on our website and at other events throughout the year. So look for them. Check them out. Get inspired. Yep. Go check the blog. And uh, come back next year with even more cool stuff. So Perry, are we ready to unveil our first set of finalists? That's why we're here. Okay. So as always, we have three categories in the Innovation Awards. First is best innovation, law firm, or corporation. Then we have our solution provider category. And finally, the coveted community choice. Community choice. That's, the, that's the one everyone wants. So we start with enterprise? Yeah, let's jump into enterprise. So we have, we're unveiling the, the three finalists in the enterprise space. And it's Bricker and Eckler, Kilpatrick Townsend, and Troutman Sanders. Yes, that's the plus. Awesome. And we're going to start with uh, Bricker and Eckler for their land tracker, land tracker solution. Um, so please come on up. So my name is David Hasman, and uh, I'm the litigation support manager at Bricker and Eckler. And uh, with me is Frank Merrill. Uh, yeah, Frank Merrill. I'm a partner in our energy and utilities practice group. Well, welcome, guys. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the problem that you were trying to solve with land tracker? The problem uh, that we had was uh, we had a large client. Uh, it's an interstate natural gas pipeline project. We had uh, a lot of data. We were looking at uh, filing a lawsuit involving hundreds of defendants, a lot of different data points coming in, and the information is changing on a constant basis. And we really didn't know when we would have to file the action. But when the client says, hey, we need to file now, then I've got a big problem because I've got to stop everything, pull all this information together, and generate pleadings, motions for preliminary injunction, all kinds of notices. I can't wait a month to have a bunch of lawyers sit in a room and QA, QC all this data. So I have a big problem. I said, David, I need help. So the big problem became David's big problem, basically. Oh, yeah, and it was a big one. <laughs> <laughs> you want to uh, walk us through the, sure. the solution yeah. here? Yeah, so, you know, so, you know what, what, when I went down this road, I was like, you know what, I need to make this very, very easy for our attorneys, because this is, you know, outside of our e-discovery, and, and, you know, they're not always in relativity. So went with the Google route, right? So simple. very, you know, um, simple. Type in any landowner or parcel number, and then um, that will take you to our, our next page, which is our, our land, our uh, next one after that. But... Uh, so, kind of how Frank said, there's a lot of information that goes into this application, and some of it was coming from our client's database, so there's a lot of electronic information, but there was a lot of manual in information that we needed to pull from title packages, such as, and pull out easement holders and leaseholders and things like that. So we built a bunch of uh, objects and event handlers to pull that information. You and guys had tons of objects in this app. Yeah, I think there was about 30 some and about a couple thousand fields couple and choices, fields. I think, was when it came down yeah, to it, so it was, there was a lot. Pretty huge. Yeah, for sure. 
And what are we seeing here? Yeah, so once you type in a landowner's name or parcel number, this is kind of like our landowner homepage, and this is where everything gets tied together. Um, so, you know, Frank can log into the system and say, you know, what's going on with Dave Hasman's piece of land? Like, who's, you know, who, who easement holders are on there, whatnot. What was really cool was that we were able to integrate Google Earth and into this application, which was a really big uh, win for us. So when you went into here, you can actually see uh, you know, where this pipeline is going and how it's being routed. Very and intuitive. Yeah. Very, saved you probably a lot of time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was. So you know, the next kind of phase of it was like, all right, now so we have all this information in the system. You know, why can't we now automate our pleadings package? And that's really what we did. But we even took it a step further. We not just automated the, the redacted text there, but we also pulled in uh, survey plat maps, think of them as blueprints, and added them into the pleadings document automatically. So it was, you know, there's nobody copying and pasting these documents into there. It so was you, all automatic. You have a mass action here to generate Word documents on the fly, pulling the fields from relativity and the images. Yes. Thousands cool. of fields and choices. That saved hours. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So then we even kind of went one step further on this was, okay, so now that we filed this action, now we need to track the service of, of, of you know, people getting served the packets and whatnot. So we built in a bunch of timelines. We built in an auto day uh, generated email that actually said, okay, how many people we still have left to serve and all those things like that. And then we built in a, a case calendar in there to kind of track it all together because there's a, a lot of moving dates to that. So you got a whole end-to-end -end workflow here yeah. covered, and you're using the relativity platform to do it all with the Google integration. In really, really yes. pr pretty slick. We, uh, yeah, we definitely uh, tested the waters, you know, uh, on this one for sure. Yeah. Very cool. I, I remember, uh, f uh, Frank, you were saying earlier, like this would have taken you like 20, tw you know, 20 people, m months at, of time. At least 20 attorneys working nonstop for at least two or three weeks trying to pull all this data, QA, QC it, you know, cut and paste it and put it in all these packages and we were able to do it over a weekend and 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 the the attorneys now have access to it and they can pull up the data and they're different they're from different practice groups i mean we've got you know real estate attorneys we've got litigators we've got environmental attorneys energy attorneys they're all they can all go in there and find the information that they need so it's it's a great one stop shopping place awesome that is so cool yeah well thank you guys Thanks a lot. Thanks for showing it to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. It's cool. That is a huge app. We really like that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, our next finalist uh, is from Kilpatrick Townsend. Their Lit Smart exhibit sticker. Come on up. Hey. Patrick. Congrats. Yeah. How are you doing, Patrick? Why don't you introduce yourself? My name is Kevin Duncan. I'm a senior project manager with the eDiscovery group at uh, Kilpatrick Townsend. So why don't you tell us a little, a little bit about what you were trying to, to solve here with the uh, exhibit sticker. So my inspiration for this uh, was a 3 a.m. phone call from a very harried lit support manager, project, uh, paralegal. Uh, it was that hair on fire moment. We just finalized uh, our exhibit list and we need stickers by 8 a.m. I reminded her it was 3 a.m. <laughs> um, uh, if you're familiar with uh, the, the, the early disclosures process, 30 days before trial, you have to exchange all your exhibits. Uh, some uh, courts are requiring, um, uh, they've come a little bit into the modern age and uh, allow things to be exchanged electronically, but they still really like that adhesive sticker on there. They want it to look like a sticker. They want the pretty sticker. <laughs> yeah. They like pretty stickers. And uh, uh, what was happening was that was it was uh, our central point of truth is relativity. Everything that didn't happen unless it was in relativity. It's kind of like, uh, yeah, you weren't there unless it was posted on Facebook. Um, so uh, what would happen, would it, it would, everything was going outside of relativity. It was getting all mangled up. And then we'd have to try and find a way to get those numbers, those exhibit numbers, back into relativity. So it was, it was a, a, a big mess. And, and it was often at the last minute and uh, a lot of hours uh, and waking up people to, to do something um, very manual. So I'm teams. hearing it's a, you know, very reactive, very manual, very error prone. And so you solved this. You want to walk us through a little bit about a little bit of the solution here? Sure. It's it, it's it's deceptively simple. Uh, it's using the uh, mass action function. Uh, it, it's very simple, similar to a save as PDF. Uh, you quite uh, uh, create a save search, 
uh, identify your documents, um, and uh, check the ones you want. Click a exhibit sticker and go. And then it takes you up to a pop-up. Uh, the pop-up has uh, some customization options. You can have up to three lines. Uh, you can um, either number them sequentially, just pick a, a starting number and add your padding into it, or you can identify a field. So if you have, so if there's skips and uh, gaps between numbers, you can just uh, point it to a field and, and have it custom number it exactly as you want. Uh, there's a preview option. It'll uh, show you where you want to place it. You can put it at the, the bottom or the top. Uh, it creates white space at the bottom, so you don't have to mess around with trying to avoid text or anything like that. It creates a, a little half inch of space at the bottom or at the top, and uh, there's, there's no manipulating the stamp after. And then uh, it exports uh, into a folder on your desktop, a zip on your desktop. And then you just refresh the screen, and all your sticker numbers are populated in the database, so you don't have to uh, deal with overlays or Excel spreadsheets or anything like that. So we, uh, uh, Andrew mentioned the, the Renee rant at the at keynote, and we got a total Renee rant on this process, and he was like so excited about this tool. Uh, he just like kept talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. That, that's really great to hear because we honestly thought that maybe just we weren't. We, weren't, we were alone in this. We were, we were uh, searching for a solution without an audience. Uh, uh, and um, and I, I actually talked around uh, to a few people about this in other parts. And they were like, oh my god, you have to do this. And I want a copy. Uh, and so that was uh, what we needed uh, to, 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 to proceed. So One 3 AM phone call too many. I finally got you to build the app. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank well, thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay, so our third finalist uh, for Troutman and Sanders uh, is their Converge solution. How are you doing? Chris. Hi, Chris. Good to see you. Why don't you introduce yourself, Chris? Sure. I'm, I'm Chris Haley. I'm the Director of Legal Technology for Troutman Sanders and our subsidiary, Emerge. You're becoming a regular at the Innovation Awards, too. <laughs> well, we like to keep it that way, yes. <laughs> so what, what were you guys trying to, uh, to solve here? Well, like many of you, we had uh, clients that have multiple matters, uh, and they don't want to pay to process and host the same data over and over again. These matters often have the same data and the same custodian. So we set out to really finally solve the matter, master matter repository solution, um, and so that's what Converge does. It allows us to offer our clients a single relativity workspace where all the data is processed and stored, uh, and that, but yet still have the power of having multiple uh, child matters and different workspaces for those matters without having to host the data more than once. Awesome. You want to walk us through? Sure, sure. The, cool. uh, this first screenshot, really the first challenge we had was that uh, this particular client that we had um, had data coming from many sources. We used to be a new shop, now we process in relativity, we had productions, we had data coming in from other providers. So we needed a way to, to uh, deduplicate across all those data sets. So we had to create an advanced deduplication process. These are some examples of what we were finding. Uh, some processing tools put the flag in the extracted text, some obviously put the, uh, the domain information when there's a link to text in the HTTP. So we needed a way to normalize the data so that the, we were truly analyzing the content and, and could deduplicate. I think if there's one more here, that uh, email uh, addresses are another problem. So different systems uh, look at the email addresses different ways. And so we needed this process to be able to do that. So relativity dedupe is going to miss those emails. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So now we have a way to identify all the duplicates across any source uh, in a single workspace. Uh, and, it, and we generate our own emerge hash value for that that we can then use as a relational field to, uh, to group those documents. And then the next step is we needed then to, to aggregate or combine all the custodians into a all custodians and all paths field for those duplicates. And then once we've done that preparation work, the, the workspace is now a big ECA workspace that has all this data across all these matters from any collections at any time in one workspace uh, for, the, for a client. So you get this big workspace and you can start to rip out That's right. into child workspaces. Yeah, so you find uh, whatever you want for, the, for a specific matter. I can go in and run those searches in this master repository uh, and then be able to uh, prepare that data and move it to a, uh, a child matter workspace, for lack of a better term, uh, and, and for that specific matter. So especially when you have you know, multiple different uh, merits council on different matters, um, you, you could put them in one workspace, but there's so many advantages to having separate workspaces, but you don't want to pay to host it more than once. But then we ran into a problem. What happens if the attorneys in that, uh, in that workspace 
uh, for that one individual matter, negotiated a specific set of five custodians. But we collected the same data for 100 uh, custodians. So we may want to adjust and display the, only the custodians that have been negotiated for that matter. So we created a custodian registry in the master workspace where you can go in and say, for this matter, I only care about these five custodians. And then that way we can create a, a custodian and paths field that's specific to that matter uh, when we deliver the data to the child workspace. So hosting only one copy and not oversharing. That's right. That's right. Uh, and so then we originally we created, when we created this solution, we didn't have RIP, but then RIP came out. So now we use RIP for Converge, and we're able to then send the data from the master repository, once you've made those selections based on a safe search, into a child matter. Uh, and we do that in a way that keeps the natives and images with the master repository, so we're not hosting that data more than once. Uh, and then we also then can leverage RIP to get coded information and work product back from all of the child matters back into the master and can set up even a RIP job that's an automated process to send coding decisions back out to the child workspaces that they can, they can use to reuse the work product. I mean, after all, a, a document in one that's privileged is probably going to be privileged in all the other matters. Really cool. I love that you're using RIP. Uh, it's a really important part of the Relativity platform. And I think this is a great uh, workflow you guys built here. Great. Yeah, it's been great for our clients. Saves them a ton of money not having to process and host the data more than once. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Thanks Chris. guys. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. OK. So I think it's time to announce the winner in the enterprise category, the law firm and corporation category. And I wanted to invite uh, Kelly up to make the big reveal. Three amazing solutions this year, huh, Perry? Yeah, very amazing. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> OK. Make sure I get my category right. And Just this year's winner for the Law Firm Corporation Innovations Award, Relativity Fest 2017, Bricker and Eckler for Land Tracker. Congrats, Congrats David. Yeah, congratulations, you guys. Great. That's Frank. Good job. Great. <laughs> awesome. All right. A lot of excitement. Awesome. Cool. Only two left. Two more awards left. All right. Let's move on to best solution provider. So we're going to first unveil the three finalists from this year's uh, solution provider category. We have Compliance, we have Evolver, and we have H5. Can we have compliance come join us on the stage? Congrats. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience here? Uh, Stacy Newman. I am a business developer here in the Midwest for Compliance Discovery Solutions. So Stacy, tell us what you are trying to tackle with CI processing. So we have a managed services, which is called DAS, uh, Discovery as a Service. So it's a DIY managed services, and it allows clients to pretty much do everything as if it were their own instance. So they can load, export, all the administrative rights. So one of the things we're always looking at, how do you get your data when you have a managed services environment into your environment, right? So definitely looking at that kind of ease of use, taking us out of that equation, direct loading. And we always want to, especially starting as a managed review company, eliminate the clicks. Like, mm. how can you just get rid of some of those clicks and make things move faster? So easier process, faster upload. So self-serve, and you wanted to make this basically drag and drop. Drag and drop. Let's take a look. We need more drag and drop in relativity. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it is so easy, right? Drag and drop. I can just mic drop and leave now, right? <laughs> That's it. Um, so here you go. This is kind of your landing page. So you'll come in and see if you have workspace set up or if you have your processing profile ready to go. You can select it here. Um, from there, then you essentially can decide what type it is. Is it a corporate email? You can look at the collection date, add those additional identifiers within your data as you go to load it. Custodians, you can pre-pen the local file folder, and then you literally grab and you drag and drop, whether it's a folder or it's a document directly in. So you got the processing profile, you got the settings, you drag and drop, and it kicks off. Yep. Very yep. cool. And then you're actually tracking the work as it goes, and you're using Aspira yes. for the transfer, right? Yes. So Aspira is a high-speed transfer um, software, and essentially it's an IBM product. It's a great product. So it moves the data through much faster. So you can go ahead. It kicks off the Aspira protocol, starts uploading the data. As it hits, it automatically starts processing. And, and tell voila, us about 
there it is. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> um, so the nice thing is you can go right from either inventory or directly to discover. So then it gets right up in your system and you can start uh, the process. I really, like the, I really like the way you guys show the status of all the jobs. It's really easy to read and yeah. stuff starts showing up in your workspace. How has this had an impact for your, for your customers who are more self-serve now? It's been great. Yeah. Um, they love it because they don't have to call us. <laughs> it moves the data in faster. And I think that's what everybody wants is just that easier process. And especially with processing, you think about all the steps that we've eliminated with the drag and drop. They love the ease of use of it and the simplicity and get their data into their environment and off and running. Awesome. This one actually generated another great Renee rant. Yes, it did. Our processing PM loves yes, it. Yes, it did. So thank you so much, Stacey. Thank you. Thank you. So we'd now like to welcome to the stage uh, Evolver with their Accelerator application. Mm. Congrats. Hey, how are you doing? How's it going? You want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my name is Jeff Snyder. I'm the director of software development. And, you know, guys, I wanted to thank you for having us up here. And yeah. uh, it's great to see the innovation awards grow. I mean, just last year, I think you were in hoodies. And now look at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome. And thank you. And thanks for uh, uh, submitting Accelerator. But tell us about uh, what Accelerator does. So Accelerator uh, solves the native Excel problem when it comes to redactions. Um, we are a service provider, and we also develop software. And several years ago, um, you know, we started getting involved where we had financial institutions doing uh, large litigations with Excel documents. How do you redact them? We don't want to tiff them. Uh, so we created Accelerator. And, uh, and, and this uh, was actually, you know, broad, broad pain points in relativity, really but this is. was a matter-driven solution, right? It is a broad pain point, but this was a specific matter-driven solution. And, and after we solved that uh, solution, we said, you know, we might actually have a product on our hands that right. other people can take advantage of. Let's take a look. We, we see a lot of uh, native Excel redaction tools. We thought yours was like really uh, one of the more sophisticated ones this year. Uh, so thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, and I think it is, too. Um, and, and what we'd like to highlight, I think, in some of these screens, I mean, first off, we're tied directly into all the relativity permissions. So at a very granular level, you can control all the aspects of our uh, of our functionality, you know, from the mass operations all the way down to our viewer technology. And this next screen, uh, it, it's a little bit difficult to see where actually our tech is, but this is actually uh, our viewer. So we are embedded directly into the document review screen, so it's extremely seamless for the users uh, to interact with the Excel document. What we loved about this one is the, the user might not even know that there's a plugin here. You pop an Excel open in the viewer, you're right there and you're redacting. Absolutely. It's, it's a great integration. Yeah, yeah, you don't even job. need Excel on your computer to, to be using it. This is all done with Relativity Agents, no, no Excel installed? Correct. Very all cool. done in the back end with Relativity Agents. And then uh, this last screen that we're highlighting here, so we have several mass operations, but one of the ones that I think really adds a ton of value is our bulk redactions. So the ability to really from any screen in Relativity uh, do a mass operation and perform bulk redactions so you can either search for a data to redact or search for data to keep and redact everything else. Very cool. Thank you so much for showing it to us. Yeah. That's awesome. Thanks. Finally, let's welcome our third finalist, H5, to the stage. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. How's it going? How you doing? Congrats. You guys want to say hi to the audience? All right, so uh, my name is Jason Richard. I'm the Senior Director of eDiscovery Services for H5. And I'm joined here with Charlie Kalp. I'm Charlie Kaup. I'm the uh, product manager for H5 Matter Intelligence. Cool. So what are you guys doing with H5 Matter Intelligence? Well, uh, the problem we're trying to solve is that um, you know, at the end of the day, eDiscovery is a team sport. And close coordination between us and all the different parties to come together to, to make these matters happen and to get work done um, is, is difficult. Today, you use email. You use uh, conference calls. There's a, it's a hard to, to bring everybody together. So the objective here was to use H5 Matter Intelligence to bring us closer together. Cool. Should we take a look at the app? Sure. So uh, we got our start here. Um, a few years back, we began experiencing some pretty tremendous growth. And we, need, we had this need to develop internal applications that supported our project management team and our uh, e-discovery operations team. Um, and uh, what you're seeing right now, actually, is uh, the genesis of that became matter intelligence. So we've got this, uh, the first screen here we're looking at is our infrastructure center, and it's a, um, a resource monitoring application for uh, our managed services clients, and it'll show you different um, 
different places where you may have a user experience problem, we get notifications from that, um, all the way down to uptime, user history, et cetera. Cool. So summary of the infrastructure, you can also drill into all these metrics, right? Oh, of course, yes. Cool. Directly into relativity. What's next? Uh, this is what was the original application uh, a few months, a few years back. <laughs> uh, this is our billing center dashboard. Um, we developed it to uh, provide a cross-matter and cross-service item summary of uh, everything that we do behind the curtain. Our goal here was pure transparency for our clients. And you had a cool feature here with the month to date billing and the estimate for the rest of the month? Uh, yes, yes. Um, we actually provide based on run rate. We'll show you what, um, what we expect our end of month billing might look like. Uh, and we'll even notify you if you are approaching certain thresholds of that billing. Very cool. So the third part of the app was the collaboration center. Right. So I like to think of the collaboration center as the glue that kind of binds these other three together. Uh, it's a multi-party multi-workspace collaboration area. It's a suite of tools consisting of a um, group-based news feed, group-based calendar, group-based tasks, which you can assign to other users in a workspace, um, as well as a group chat directly embedded in Relativity. You want to take us through some of the elements we're seeing in the feed here? Yeah, this is, uh, this is actually highlighting a little bit of our Relativity integration specifically. Um, Everything is tied directly to relativity permissions, which each group inherits from relativity. Uh, and what you're seeing here is um, what we're calling a context card, which is a really cool new way to share a saved search beyond just emailing a link. So we paste a link in here, send it through an approval process with a client, um, and then we generate some nice visuals uh, of each of the, um, the aspects of that search. Um, and of course, all these numbers, it's a little hard to see the blue. Those are clickable, and you can go right into the workspace and perform actions on those documents. Very cool. Watching the, uh, the demo for this thing, you know, I got the feeling this, how like, big this, you know, this solution is. I mean, you guys have done a lot of stuff here. Um, can you share anything about where you're going in the future? Any, anything you can share about your roadmap? Uh, sure. Yeah, so continuing to build on uh, the different collaboration aspects of the application, trying to, again, keep looking for different ways to bring our clients together. Um, we have a, a knowledge base, which is all about centralizing key decisions and case materials. We're going to keep expanding on that to get more and more case management tools inside of the application. Uh, and in addition to that, in the billing center, we're working now on some uh, really interesting metrics that you can get both inside of a project and across projects for everything that you see in your billing center uh, that you're hosting at H5. In addition to that, right now, um, given all the demand that we have, we're exploring ways of actually making access to that H5 Matter Intelligence much easier for our customers and hopefully new customers as well. Cool. Very cool. Thank you guys for showing it. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Congrats. Oh, great. Thanks, guys. Hey. Thank you. OK, so should we invite our guest judge, Zach, up to present the Solution Provider Award? We should. Right. <clears throat> and the winner for the Solution Provider 2017 is H5 for Matter Intelligence. Congrats, guys. Congrats. Congrats. Awesome. Hey, congrats. congratulations, guys. Nice job. Congrats. Okay. What do you think, Drew? Awesome. Yeah? Some really cool stuff. So one more award to give out. Yes. And we have the coveted Community Choice Award. So thank you, first of all. We got almost 3,000 votes this yeah, year. Over Everyone 3, voted. Thank you so much. And we think this award is really cool because uh, it allows all of the people in the relativity community to go in and read about these 26 various solutions and pick their favorite. So without further ado, Let's bring up Sean, Sean. to uh, announce the Community Choice Winner 2017. Yeah. Well, first of all, this is a, a tremendous honor because in previous years, this is how I participated until the awesome. judging process actually got very transparent for me this year. So and without you, further ado. And you, know, and you know, this is like one of the, this is. <laughs> 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 what do we got? Okay, I'm glad I got help because if this says La La Land, I get it back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. 
for the 2017 Community Choice Award, Q Discovery, Q Mobile Insight. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pretty cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah, really cool. Congratulations, guys. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Guys. Yeah. Thank you. Bear dog. Still don't know what a bear dog is. All right, so thanks again so much to all 26 of our submissions this year. We're really excited to hand out the awards. It was the best year we've had yet. Um, we're going to get out of your way and hand it off to Andrew for closing keynote. Closing keynote. Thanks, guys. All right. All right, guys. It's for you. I need this.